Now we live in a world of compromise. Now your macho manly self wants to get an SUV, but the family needs a seven seater MPV, but your wallet dictates that all you can afford is a compact crossover. But how do you meld all those things together? Well, Geely might just have the answer for you. What's going on guys? Roy Robles here from zigwheels.ph and today we've got Geely's answer to all your problems and which car you might want to choose for yourself and your family. This is the Geely Alcavango Urban Plus. Right, so to start off with the design of the Geely Alcavango Urban Plus, it does have quite a futuristic design up front right here. You've got this interesting front grille with its three lower bezels right here. We also have these full LED headlamps. Even the fog lamps are full LED, which is quite an interesting look, especially at night. And of course, this lower lip right here, it kind of looks like a diffuser on the rear, but they decided to put that up front. Looks like a skid plate design, but don't take this off-road, guys. You definitely don't want to bring this off the beaten path. This is more of like a highway cruiser, in my opinion. So you the overall look of the front end, the Giglio Cavango, isn't going to you know win any design awards, but it is definitely functional. I like how the front end is flat and tapered off like that. Definitely different, especially when comparing it to other mid-size SUVs or even MPVs. Now heading over to the side profile of the Giglio Cavango, you definitely see how it makes its case about being a mid-size crossover SUV because it has those prerequisite black plastic claddings all around it. And you know those character lines on the front and rear fenders. You've got 18-inch alloy wheels right there with really nice and chunky tires. Now one of the quirks that I find about the Giglio Cavango here is the roof rails. So instead of having the roof rails flush on the roof right there, it actually has these kind of odd stands on it. And in fact, you got the Geely branding right there in the middle. But I appreciate that Geely gave us some functional roof rails. It's just that could have had designed it better. Now notice right here up front, you got this badge that says 48V EMS. This is because this does have an electric motor inside this. It has a mild hybrid system. So you got a 48 volt motor helping out the engine and we'll be discussing that later on in our drives. Well, overall, the side profile of the Giglio Cavango looks interesting enough, but it's kind of quirky because of these roof rails. All right, so heading over to the rear of the Giglio Cavango, this is where things start to settle down just a little bit. Now you got a spoiler up top plus a shark's fin antenna. Again, this is definitely plain for me, and I appreciate that after experiencing the front and the side profile. Now, as you noticed, right at the bottom, you only see this skid plate right there. It's definitely not functional, it's just a trim, but you don't see any exhaust ports. Now, I appreciate Geely for not putting in those fake exhaust ports because this definitely doesn't need it. This is a family car, it's not a sporty car at all. And they're not pretending that you're gonna put you know, fake exhaust vents there at all. One nifty thing about the Okavango Urban Plus is that it has a power tailgate, but you can actually operate it remotely using your key fob. So I'm asking my director to open up now. And there you go. You can always open that power tailgate using a button right there on the tailgate. But it's nice to know that you can actually open it up from afar. So if you're having a lot of stuff and um, you need to um, have it open right away, you can do so right there. And it gives you access to all this space for your luggage, even though you have the third row seats folded up. If you want need even more space, this seats here they fall down in a 50-50 split, giving you even more space. And if you need even more space than that, the second row seats actually fall down with a 33-33-33 configuration and gives you a lot of space. Like I said, who needs a pickup truck with all your stuff in the back exposed to the elements when you can get something like this? And for that, I appreciate the Elka Van Gogh. So let's shut this down, easy. And let's take a look at the inside. All right, so inside the Giglio Cavango, it starts to make much more sense to me. You've got these leather seats, you've got these leather wrapped steering wheel, even leather right here on the dashboard. It gives it a little more premium feel. Now the door panels, they're definitely hard plastic as well as the top part of the dashboard, but at least where you're gonna rest your arms at, right there in the door and right here on these armrests, 
They're also leather wrapped as well. Now the steering wheel has a D shape to it. It's a large diameter steering wheel there. You've got controls for your both your media and uh, your gauge cluster. So speaking of the gauge cluster, you can actually change the theme of it. So depending on your drive mode, you can select between normal or eco, comfort and sport. There you go. And the screen actually changes accordingly. It's a 12.3 inch a fully digital gauge. Now you also have a 12.3 touchscreen infotainment system. Uh, it, unfortunately, it does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it does power eight speakers, which I gotta say is one of the better speaker systems that I've heard in, in a stock system, a stock setup. You also have these automatic climate control systems right here. So the center console also has this weird crosshatch silver trim there that's mirrored by the bezels on the air conditioning which i think adds a little bit more contrast to the overall black uh, design of the interior which is nice you've got this interesting looking shift knob that kind of looks like the aliens in independence day welcome to earth no, just kidding. <laughs> okay so you also have uh, the select drive selector right here you've got your hill descent control your 360 degree camera your button to activate or deactivate stability control electronic parking brake and automatic brake hold now an interesting quirk here is that you actually have this space here and it actually fits the key fob so i'm thinking that's that's where you put the key fob and you don't want to lose your key fob so you're gonna place it right there. Underneath the center console, you have a power outlet, 12 volt power outlet, and even more space uh, for all your miscellaneous stuff. Overall, it's a pretty solid, a pretty robust setup. And one more thing, the seats are power operated, so the driver has power seats. That goes the same for the front passenger. And the steering wheel is adjustable for both reach and rake so getting your optimum driving position is easy visibility is great you also have this panoramic sunroof up top yeah i could definitely live in this one if i can pretend that i'm driving a sportier a more macho looking car i could just do so by getting behind the wheel right here okay so that's enough about the uh, cockpit let's head on over to the second row all right, so in the second row, you get even more space inside the Giglio Covango. So second row passengers get to enjoy all this leg room and I'm sitting behind my optimum driving position. I still have a lot of room for me to jostle around. And despite having the panoramic sunroof, headroom is excellent. Now, one interesting thing about the rear seats right here is that they actually have this digital air conditioning control system for them to control so they, apart from having the vents you can control your temperature and the fan speed as if you have your own ac controls that actually activates itself and controls both the second row vents and third row vents which is nice i appreciate that you also have usb ports two usb ports here on the second row but here's the thing Unfortunately, the second row passengers do not have a armrest there because if these things fold in a 33, 33, 33 uh, <laughs> split configuration, try saying that 10 times fast. I mean, come on. But at least it's very comfortable. You can just go ahead and do this and lounge back. The seats don't actually recline, which is unfortunate, but the position that you're sitting in anyway is adequate for me. All right, I know what you guys are waiting for. Let's go ahead and try to fit my frame on the third row there. So this is how it's done. All right, so to get into the third row, you need to pull on these tabs on top of the second row seats. You have to pull them with purpose because the car will know if you're hesitating and it won't work. So that's how we do it. There you go. The seat folds forward. Then you can have access to the third row like so. Hold back. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> now, third row seats in SUVs and MPVs have never been really my strong suit, but no, I can't. I can't take it. I Me mean, probably you can ask the second row passengers to maybe slide their seats a bit forward, and maybe I'll have some knee room. But as it as it turns out right now, it feels like I'm squatting 
right here in the back. You can fit two of myself here, but our knees will be mashed on the second row. You have two cup holders, but again, no USB ports or no 12 volt sockets at all. You have aircon vents and that's it. And this is not going to be very comfortable for me, especially on long trips. Speaking of long trips, let's take this out on one and test it to how it drives. All right, so we are behind the wheel of the Geely Okavango. This is the Urban Plus variant, the top of the line model. Instantly, you'd find the Geely Okavango to be much bigger, much more comfortable, more room to stretch. And it actually feels like I'm inside a bus. But the drive isn't like a bus at all. Don't get me wrong. It's just that everything seems to be scaled up and larger in a honey, I blew up the kid kind of way. All right, so first things first, under the hood, you have a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that's made into a 48 volt electric motor. And overall, it makes 190 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. That's right, this is a mild hybrid vehicle. Here's how the mild hybrid system works in this car. The electric motor actually runs many of the electrical components here in order to decrease the load on the engine. And it actually adds a little bit more boost to the overall power rating, making this one really capable SUV. So in a nutshell, it doesn't use the electric power to propel the vehicle, but works in order to decrease the load again. So when you're out on the highway, and the electric motor is fully charged, the batteries are fully charged, you would notice that it would go on a kind of like an EV mode. So it would definitely stay on idle, will decrease the idleness and will shut down the engine completely and then keep the car moving forward. All right, it's not going to lunge you forward, it's not gonna propel you forward from a full stop, but once you're, in, once you're at cruising speed, it's then gonna activate itself until it de gets depleted. It then charges using regenerative braking and uh, in order to make sure that it, the charge goes back right up. So in a nutshell, don't think that this will achieve the same fuel economy figures of a full hybrid. It's just that it's gonna be a little better than a regular internal combustion engine. So how's the acceleration on this thing? It's surprising how much power you can get out of a gasoline engine. Usually I feel this type of pull from a, a, D, a D turbo diesel and <laughs> it's fun to drive. Suspension wise you have a McPherson struts up front and a torsion bar rear suspension in the back and that means that you're definitely not going to take this canyon carving at all. Come on guys look it's a huge SUV. I can even fit a full-size bike right there in the back with all my stuff. Again you're not going to take this uh, on the track or carving canyons at all. Maybe straight line acceleration is more its thing, but no, you're not, it's not going to be a fun uh, to chuck around in the valleys right there. But what that means is that you get more space in the back, you get more comfort inside, and you get a smoother drive. So even if you're passing through Edza, passing through C5 in the truck lane, you're just gonna feel the least amount of discomfort while you're inside. So NVH levels are definitely all right. It does a good job with isolating you from the outside world. Uh, even though we pass through uh, different sections of, like I said, Edsa and C5 that I had definitely have rough roads, you're still going to be uh, inside a comfortable little vehicle right here. So even though you have a three-cylinder engine under the hood, it's still quite nice. You won't feel the usual rattle of three-cylinder engines or uh, the rattles of a diesel. It's very comfortable and very quiet inside. The fuel economy for the Giglio Cavango and the city, you can get about seven kilometers per liter. Now you might say that that doesn't sound like too much, but you got to take into account the overall weight of this car, the overall uh, features that it carries. You have no idea how huge it is until you get inside. I mean, look at this. You even got this panoramic sunroof up top and it still gets seven kilometers per liter in the city and that's in heavy traffic. Now, once you get this out on the highway where you get to fully utilize the mild hybrid system, you're gonna look at 17 kilometers per liter. Now let's talk about safety features. Now, 
have you noticed most of our comment section talking about other cars and they say, oh, why doesn't it have a 360 degree camera? I think Geely ruined it for everyone else in the segment and for practically in, in the car community in general because most of their cars have 360 degree cameras. And the Geely Okavango Urban Plus is of no exception. It does have a 360 degree camera, especially definitely useful, especially when uh, parking through tight spaces. Uh, well, apart from that, you also have your standard ABS with the electronic brake force distribution. You got multiple airbags. You got a rear parking sensor. You got hill descent control, hill start assist, tire pressure monitoring system, stability control. Plus that 360 degree camera, like I said, it's it's the complete package. And I appreciate Geely Philippines for making those features available to the public with these types of vehicles. This is definitely top notch. Pricing for the Geely El Cavango starts at 1,208,000 pesos and that's for the entry level comfort variant. Now, if you want to have you know, power features and power amenities, you need to step up to the urban variant and that comes in at 1,328,000 pesos. Now, if you want to get the 12.3 inch uh, screen gauge right here and if you want to get the full LED package you got to spring for the Urban Plus that's the Geely Okavang Urban Plus variant and that comes in at 1,478,000 pesos and for what you're getting for all the space that you're getting inside for the power for the fuel economy I'd say it's definitely a very compelling package guys if you're in the market for a large seven seater even whether you're looking for an suv or an mpv this is a good medium between all of them i mean the the features the the the, the tech that's inside the safety uh features as well this offers so much for what is definitely priced as so there you have it folks that's our review of the Geely Okavango Urban Plus but like I always say there's no such thing as a perfect car or SUV or MPV for that fact so here are three things I don't like about this and three things I absolutely love about it first thing I don't like about the Geely Okavango is well if you're trying to please everyone at the end of the day you please no one. The Geely Okavango's overall design tries to be an SUV, an MPV, and a compact crossover at the same time. But at the end of the day, it definitely is, it, it looks quite unique. It just might take some getting used to when seeing it down the road. Now the second nitpick is, well, the interior space. Now by the numbers, it has a lot of volume inside, especially with those flat floors. But the way that it's designed ergonomically, it's not very ideal. I mean, I'm seated in the third row and I've got my knees high up and hitting against the second row seats. Although it says it has a lot of space by volume, the way that I'm seated, it's not very comfortable for me. The third thing I don't like about this is, well, although it tries its best to give you as many convenience features as possible, especially for the second and third row, it just seems to be quite lacking. I wish it did have a little bit more USB ports inside, especially for a car that's trying to market itself that can fit seven people. I wish that it at least has seven USB ports or even some, some, some sort of 12 volt sock in the rear. So it might want to have that in future variants. Now that we picked all the nits that we can from this car, here are three things I love about the El Cavango. The first thing I love about it is the powertrain. Now you've got a 1.5 liter turbocharged engine made into a 48 volt electric motor, which means this is a mild hybrid system. Now all that power under the hood, plus the fuel economy that you're getting might not be evident, especially with all these EVs, all these full hybrids on the road. But imagine if this did not have an electric motor, it would have so much worse fuel economy. The second thing about the El Cavango that I really love are the safety features. I mean, these days, 360 degree camera should be a given, especially for vehicles this size and at this price. So I really commend Geely for giving its vehicles 360 degree cameras, parking assist systems, multiple airbags. And yes, you can find them in the El Cavango. And the last thing I love about this is, well, like I said earlier, you want an SUV, but you need an MPV. The Geely Alcavago definitely delivers. I mean, you've got the refinement, you've got the power, and you've got enough seats to seat seven people inside. I mean, it's a great and compelling package. So there you have it, folks. That's the Geely Alcavango. Now, there's a reason why you see so many of these on the road. It's because it offers quite a compelling package for the price, and it doesn't look half bad. I mean, it does take quite some getting used to, but it's okay. Thanks so much for watching. 
Tell me what you think about their reviews. Drop us a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. This is Roy Robles from Zigwills.ph and I'll see you guys next time.